All right, if you can look into your future and see that being an orchestra musician is your destiny, then there's something that the college curriculum does not require you to do that is absolutely essential. If you go to music school, your college curriculum says that you have to take one lesson a week, you have to play an orchestra, chamber music ensemble, music theory, music history, ear training. Yes, all that stuff is essential. But what's also required and essential that they may not tell you or you may not realize is that you have to go to orchestra concerts. I'm gonna talk about why attending orchestra concerts every single week is so important and exactly how to go through that process on a weekly basis in order to get the most out of it. If you wanna study audition preparation with me and with Noah Kagayama from The Bulletproof Musician this fall and winter, mark your calendars to enroll starting on October 8th. And if you like this video and you wanna see more of these kind of videos about audition preparation and orchestra training, hit like or the thumbs up below this video and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Rob Knopper Studio. I'd go to youth orchestra at the Detroit Symphony Civic Orchestra during the day on Saturday. I would get tickets from them. That evening, I would go to the performance. And a lot of times the next day on Sunday, I would go again just to try to soak in as much information as I could for those pieces. Here is why it is so essential for you to go and study professional orchestra concerts. Think about all the music you play. You go to orchestra rehearsal and you go to lessons and you're trying to figure out what it says on sheet music into sound, but it still always feels like a foreign language, like you don't know how it should sound, and you're just kind of guessing and thrashing around and getting feedback from your teacher and the conductor and orchestra rehearsal. All of that stuff is going to be useful to you, but when you go to an orchestra concert, you can see how a professional musician who plays your instrument, who has been successful and successfully does this for a living, does the same process that you're trying to do. It's how they translate the music written on the page into sound. It's gonna help you to learn the foreign language of classical music, to be more fluent so that you can trust your own decisions more. You can't just go and show up and watch. You have to study the music. You have to know what you think you would do and compare it with what they're doing in the professional orchestra concert. Think about it, if you want to be a professional orchestra musician, you need to be so familiar with what it feels like and looks like and sounds like to do this on a regular basis. You have to know the subtle differences between a performance of Symphony Fantastique by the New York Philharmonic versus the Pittsburgh Symphony versus the LA Philharmonic versus the Berlin Phil. The same piece of music, you need to go be in the room knowing exactly how you would play something and notice every single minute difference in how a professional plays something and interprets the same piece of music. That's the way that you can evolve your playing towards a professional direction so that eventually you too can speak fluently the language of classical music just like the professionals do. So there's four parts of this that I'm gonna talk you through to help you get ready for this process. The first is to plan out your schedule. If you look at the website of the New York Philharmonic, you'll see these amazing, great pieces coming up. This is the opening month for a lot of orchestras. So for instance, the New York Phil, first week they're playing Rite of String by Stravinsky and Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 5, the Emperor Concerto. Then they're playing Bruckner 8 the next week. Then they're playing La Mer and then Sibelius Symphony Number no. 2. Those are amazing symphonic works that are perfect for you to get started with. The Detroit Symphony, they start with Enigma Variations by Elgar, then they go into Firebird Suite, then the next week they do Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 1. All of these pieces are incredibly important symphonic works in the repertoire that you must know like the back of your hand. Once you have your schedule laid out, you're not just gonna show up up, you're gonna prepare, you're gonna study the music as though you are performing this. I have another video called How to Prepare Your Part for Orchestra. You are gonna go through that exact process. I think it takes me something like five entire listens through in a very specific way to actually feel like I'm ready for an orchestra part. Once you go through this process, you're gonna know the music inside and out. You're gonna also know one individual interpretation, one recording. It doesn't have to be from the same orchestra, but it's gonna be something that sets your foundation of understanding for this piece. And then when you go to the performance, you're gonna notice all these interesting differences. So you prepare your part, it's completely marked up. It's as though you could go sit down and perform it with an orchestra 
right now. So the third part is to go to the concert. You have your music, bring some binoculars, bring the score if you want. Maybe you can get a score desk seat, which is where they have a little desk and a little light for you to actually read music while you're watching. I want you to pay attention to every single detail of what happens as much as you possibly can. Follow along with the music and look at the person who's playing your instrument a lot. Figure out exactly how they prepare for each entrance, how they phrase every entrance. It's gonna be fascinating and enlightening to see how they do things slightly differently from how you would have done them. However they would have done them is now your new standard, your new musical instinct. So you're comparing and contrasting those things. A lot of times you can get comp tickets from your school or you can do something that I used to do called stubbing in, which is where you just wait outside eagerly for whoever's leaving after the first half and beg them for their tickets. Or maybe there's a student ticket discount or something like that. At the Met Opera, there's often standing room tickets that you can get. The fourth part of this process is to plan to do this for three entire years. That's the number of years it's gonna take for your orchestra, whichever one you're going to see, to go through all the big repertoire. Think about it, over three years, you're gonna see all the music that's so important that they can't wait three years to play it again. You're gonna see the Rite of Springs, the Beethoven Nines, the Mahler Fives. You're gonna see some important work by nearly every important composer. Think through all the eras of composers, Schubert, Schumann, Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, Bartok, all the important composers that have written great symphonic music that you'll have to know. So if you plan to learn every new piece Piece over three years, then you are going to know a huge amount of the orchestral repertoire. If you like this video, remember to hit the thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Rob Studio, and I can't wait to see you guys.